welcome to That Handicapping Show. I'm Pete Dank. Uh, Tom Lamar is out of town this week, and I'm pleased to be joined by Frank Angst of the Blood Horse. We're going to be looking at the Claiming Crown at Gulfstream Park. Um, today's focus, we're going to look at the final two races on the Claiming Crown card. These are the races for three-year-olds and up, going a mile and 16 on the turf and a mile and an eighth on the dirt. Uh, let's start with the Emerald Stakes. This is a $125,000 purse. Again, this is a turf race, big field. We've got 14 horses could go to the gate, and there's some four also eligibles also. Um, Frank, your first pass through this race, what did uh, stand out to you? Yeah, it looks like it will be a full field as the uh, Claiming Crown moves down to Gulfstream Park for the first time. And, and in races like this, uh, these restricted stakes, these uh, races are kind of like starter allowance where, you know, these horses had to run in claiming races. I, I always look for class. Mm -hmm. and. It's more fun to find hidden class. Unfortunately, here I found the obvious class. We have a horse in King David that two starts ago won a grade one. Uh, granted, that was uh, restricted to three-year-olds, but he did win a grade one, which mm -hmm. is saying a lot. And then really, like just on that, I'm not sure I would have taken the horse, but I really liked his previous race because I think a lot of Leah uh, that won the race at Churchill Downs, and he ran second to him, a, a bit of a troubled start, was wide. Uh, didn't get up in the race as much as this horse usually does, which is another thing I like on the Gulfstream turf. I think he will revert to his usual running pattern of being closer to the lead here. Uh, it's just so a lot of things I like about King David in this in this field. I liked his last race a lot. When I, when I watched that replay, I didn't really see this horse get to length and stride until the eighth pole. Yeah. And he closed about five lengths in that final eighth. Not an easy thing to do at Churchill Downs. And uh, he's also if not my top pick, one of my top picks here. If he gets beat, I think it'll be because he's too far back. Mm -hmm. Gulfstream is a, is a speedy turf course. It's one where trip really matters. You want to be inside. You want to be fairly close to the lead. Those are the horses that get first run and are, and are hard to catch here. Uh, two other horses of interest for me. Uh, the one, Nicky Sandcastle. I think he's the other obvious class play in this race. Yeah. Um, while he's not a grade one winner, he's been facing older horses. He's in really good form. He's coming off a second place finish in the Fayette Stakes at Keeneland. Now that was a mile and an eighth on the poly track. But Nicky Sandcastle has an excellent turf record. He's got five wins from 14 starts on the turf. And he's been butting heads with what I would consider to be grade two, grade three types. He has a bit of seconditis, which I wouldn't like to see in, a, in an open stakes, but this is a mm -hmm. conditional stakes. He's not going to run into the same type of horses in those races that um, he will here, although arguably King David, I mean, obviously already has established himself as a grade one type winner, so he is going to face a tough one there. Yeah, um, another horse here, the three horse Major Marvel, he's going to be ridden by uh, Javier Castellano. I think this is the type of horse that I look to bet at Gulfstream in terms of running style. He's got tactical speed and he can punch home. And I and I would foresee a really good trip for the three major Marvel. No, um, I like that with him that Javier Castellano. The only time on recent past performances that I see that Javi got on this horse, he won. He went gate to wire on this horse gets back on him here. So yeah, I think that horse is dangerous as well. Yeah, I think he's dangerous, especially if he gets the right trip. Uh, I prefer Nikki Sandcastle and King David a little bit. Let's move on to the Claiming Crown Jewel. This is $200,000 stake going a mile and eighth on the dirt. Uh, I guess in a way, to me, I thought this was a slightly weaker field in, in that we don't really have any group grade one form in this field. Yeah. And I think it's a little bit trickier. You've got horses that have run big speed figures, such as the one Tis Liberty uh, at low-level claiming races. He's been competing at the ten, fifteen thousand dollars claiming races in Santa Anita, you know, but running big speed figures. Um, I also noticed that none of the horses in this race have won going a mile and an eighth. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah, the, I mean, the horse that I landed on is actually coming out of a seven furlong sprint. And as I was just speaking of Javi Castellano, again, I'm going to, with another one of his horses here in private tail. Um, I've been trying to keep track of surface biases in, in Naira for about two years now. And this horse ran against a major bias in its previous start. It was a major speed bias, and he tried to come off, off the pace a little bit. Usually I wouldn't like a horse that's too far back at Gulfstream, but one thing that I have noticed with this horse is when he goes at two turns, he's typically closer and closer early and settles into that early presser running style that I do like at Gulfstream. So that, those are a couple things I like about him there. The previous, like I was saying uh, in the previous race, uh, Castellano gets on this horse and the most recent time he rode it, he won on this horse. So that's a good 
a uh, good thing for this horse in his favor. Yeah, I had to look pretty deep in this race. You know, my first pass through, I didn't love anything. I noticed that there were a lot of horses stretching out. I do think the pace could be potentially hot because of that. Uh, the horse of interest for me here is the 10, Flatter This. Uh, he's coming out of a, uh, actually a starter allowance, 25,000 at Calder. Um, but he's got some stakes for him, uh, although he has not won at a mile and eighth. When I watched his last mile, a mile and sixteenth races, I thought that mile and eighth won't be any problem for him. And I think his last two uh, fast dirt races fit pretty well here. Uh, he'll be coming from off the pace, but I do think uh, any of his two of his last three efforts should probably be competitive or win this. Yeah, and earlier, I mean, I looked at the entire card and. Earlier on this card, I took a lot of horses that were coming over from Calder. Mm -hmm. um, just obviously because of the location, there's quite a few of the Calder claiming type horses that are coming over to Gulfstream. And I think that's a good angle. <laughs> Those Calder claiming races are tough races. They're used to the weather down there. It's not such a taxing uh, thing to ship, uh, you know, just a little bit across town there. So I, I, do, I like that angle for flatter this as well. All right, uh, the other horse I mentioned earlier, Tiz Liberty. I do think he's interesting. He's claimed almost every time he runs. He's a Tiz now. I think he'll get the distance. But I just had a problem selecting him on the huge class rise because those horses he's been beating at the ten and twenty thousand dollar claiming level often have issues, and you just don't know how a horse like that's going to run against better horses. And the other horse I was kind of looking at was Dominant Jeans, who mm -hmm. has mainly been running on turf lately. But I, I like how he's run on turf and uh, has won two of his last three starts and. He's by Pleasantly Perfect, so certainly he could go to dirt and, and do well there as well and, and like the distance. Yeah, but for, for yeah. Jason Service, too, that's a trainer that I love to bat off the claim. And Dominant Jeans is only making his fourth start for Jason Service, and that's a, that's a horse that looks a little interesting to me, too. But uh, as far as my top two picks, it's uh, King David in the uh, ninth race and Private Tail in the Jewel Stakes at tenth race. All right, I'm going to spread a little bit in, in the turf race, and I think I'm going to key on flatter this in the Claiming Crown Jewel. Um, we thank you very much for joining us today. We would like to thank Briss for the past performances and good luck this weekend.